This one hurts. Good morning. I'm Rock 107's Prospector. Pee Wee Herman has left us permanently. Paul Rubens lost a battle with cancer, a battle nobody knew he was fighting. He was 70 years old. <laughs> like Norm MacDonald, Paul never told anybody. His family issued a statement saying, quote, Paul bravely fought cancer for years with his trademark tenacity and wit. Paul actually had a statement of his own ready to be released upon his death. And it said, quote, please accept my apology for not going public with what I've been facing for the last six years. I've always felt a huge amount of love and respect from my friends, fans, and supporters. I've loved you all so much and enjoyed making art for you. Paul developed the Pee Wee character while he was with the Groundlings comedy troupe in the 1970s, turned it into a stage show, which led to an HBO special in 1981. He broke huge with Pee Wee's Big Adventure, directed by Tim Burton. I don't know about you, but I grew up with Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Watched that movie a hundred times, uh, enjoyed it, laughed at it, thought it was very creative. Uh, was a little frightened when Large Marge turns into the creature in the whole uh, truck scene. But other than that, uh, I could watch that movie over and over again. In fact, I probably will later today. A sequel called Big Top Pee Wee followed in 1988. Then came the classic Saturday morning kids show, Pee Wee's Playhouse, which ran from 1986 to 1991 on CBS. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Which, of course, also was sung by Cindy Lauper, although she did not want credit for it and used a fake name. It probably would have lasted longer, except he got arrested for indecent exposure in an adult theater in Sarasota, Florida, in July of 1991. The Pee Wee character disappeared for a while after that, but Paul continued to act in smaller parts in movies like Tim Burton's Batman Returns, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Mystery Men in Blow. He was also the voice of Locke in The Nightmare Before Christmas. In 2010, Paul did a revival of the Pee Wee Herman show on Broadway and made a movie for Netflix called Pee Wee's Big Holiday in 2015. Actor Paul Rubens, better known to the world as Pee Wee Herman, (laughs) has died at the age of 70 after a battle with cancer. Breaking the news that's already broken. It's time for Prospector's Briefs on Rock 107. Women are now subjecting potential mates to the Barbie test. Basically, if they don't like the movie or don't get it, they're not boyfriend material. I get it. For years, I used the deep throat test to screen my dates. Today is Spider-Man Day and National Girlfriend Day. If you celebrate the first one, there's very little chance you'll be celebrating the second. Paul Rubens, a.k.a. Pee Wee Herman, has died at the age of 70. Paul's presence will be missed on the big and small screens, but not necessarily in the theater. Prospector ruins everything, even the news. Tune in tomorrow for Prospector's Briefs on Rock 107. Stickler, when it comes to things that can make my newish car dirty. Got a car back in March, so I get a little crazy about it. Now, recently, a couple people in the car we did a bit of a road trip and uh, stopped at Wawa. We all ended up uh, getting hoagies, but I made all of us stand outside the car. And yeah, it was raining. We did that while we ate because... I don't allow eating in my car. Yeah. Standing in the rain eating our hoagies because I won't let anybody eat my car. Does that make me a jerk? What do you think? Richard says, absolutely not. Who doesn't enjoy a rain-soaked hoagie? Uh, Gerard, in the rain, you're a jerk. And Ruth, it's not brand new any longer. You should have spent the quarters and vacuumed the thing afterwards. What do you think? Am I a jerk? I don't know, man. I tried that lot. rule of thumb, man. But, uh... You know what? Honestly, can you, can you honestly say that you never ate nothing in your car? I have not eaten in this car, no. Oh, you just get it? Uh, March. Oh, yeah, by next year, man. You're going to be chowing down <laughs> and plow a hoagie left and right. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. Like, you know, after a little while, I'm going to finally break the rule, and then it's uh, all bets are off. But for right now, no eating in the car. That works for a while, yeah. That's maybe you knew something like that, man. But, yeah, but I know it doesn't last long. <laughs> Believe me, try it on every vehicle, but... Even smoking. So for making them eat in the rain, am I a jerk or not? No, no, absolutely not. Uh, Edna, I don't care. Not a jerk at all. My first car was a Cavalier, 10 years old when I bought it. I treated it as if it were brand new. Kathy, I tend towards the yes side on this one. And Ruth, yeah, you could have pulled over at a park or a rest stop where there was a picnic table under a pavilion, or better yet, ain't in a restaurant. So you tell me, am I a jerk? Hey, Prospector, how about half a jerk? Half a jerk. Explain that to me. Okay, the only reason I'm saying it is you are great, but uh, you could have found somewhere to eat where you guys could have sat inside and ate. That's true, you know. 
I mean, so, yeah, I understand a brand new car. No, I don't want nobody eating or smoking or anything in my car like that. So, hey, I'm a jerk. Facebook.com slash Angry Prospector. Rebecca says, yep. Melissa, no, it's your car. You can, you make the rules. And Christine, yep, you're a jerk. Facebook.com slash Angry Prospector. Tim, it's just a car. It's cleanable. Stop sweating the small stuff. Don, it's not your fault it was raining. And Mike, not a total jerk, but you should have stopped at a sit-down restaurant if you didn't want to eat in the car. So in today's question of am I a jerk? Probably. Northeast PA's Classic Rock, Rock 107. Good morning, I'm Prospector, and I uh, got a message on my Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash angry prospector from a guy named Frank who said, hey, Prospector, love the prank calls. I'd like you to prank call my wife, Carol. Uh, Carol constantly complains about robocalls and telemarketing calls all the time, yet she's always answering the phones. And I tell her, just don't answer the phone, especially if you don't know the number. Yet if the phone rings, she'll drop what she's doing and answer it. So I'd love for you to give her a prank call. Maybe it'll teach her to let some of those calls go to voicemail, and we could all have a good laugh. What do you think? Thanks, Frank and Archbold. Frank, I love it, and I think I have just the idea. Uh, I think I have a handyman service your wife would absolutely hate. <laughs> so it's another prospector prank call on Rock 107. Hello? Yeah, hi, I'm calling for uh, Carol Nibler. This is her. Carol, you live at uh, v- Street? Yes. All right, my name is uh, Rick Matheson, and I'm with SOS Handyman. We offer door-to-door service that basically does handiwork around the house, and I'm going to be down the street from you. And I know this call is kind of out of the blue, but we're calling people in your neighborhood to let them know that we'd come by and offer our services to you. And if you have a second, I'll explain what we do. I mean, yeah, thank you. I don't really think we need any kind of handyman service. Well, if you hold on for just a second, you don't know exactly what we do. We have a very specific service that I think you would benefit from. Can I just tell you what it is, and then you can hang up if you're not interested? Okay, real okay. quick? Okay. Okay, a lot of housewives are helpless in certain areas, and we understand, and that's perfectly fine. It's, it's nothing against housewives. It's one of the things we find that a lot of them have jars that are too tight or have containers they can't get open because you, you try and twist them and, and, and they're stuck. Yeah, thank you, but I can, I can open well, my okay, jars but, myself. Well, well, let me ask you something. You've never needed help with a jar? I mean, yeah, but it's usually if I'm, I'm opening something, my, my husband's there or I bang it on the counter. Okay, right. Well, that's exactly my point. You could damage your counter. I imagine you probably have expensive countertops. And, yeah. and, and I'm not trying to be personal, but your husband's probably not there all the time, right? I mean, he's got to work. Yeah, but I don't So know. what do you do in the case when your husband's not there? You're rolling the dice. Not to mention you could break that jar and boom, you got stitches. We can do it for a dollar a jar. We come into your house, we loosen all the jars and you're good to go. No, no. I, that's so so far fetched it is from opening a jar. No, I, I'm I mean, you'd be surprised the amount of emergency room visits that are from people that get stitches from having a jar break because they can't get it open. It's far more common than you yeah, think. Yeah, I don't, I don't want all my jars open at one time, and I don't oh, want to okay, say okay. you guys. You, you sound a little upset about this. I'm not saying you're weak. I'm not saying that you need the help of a man. Yeah, no, it has nothing to do with that. Uh, okay, well, what's your biggest objection? Because I feel like there's some like. Like I've stirred some anger in you, and that, that was not my intention. I just wanted to come by and loosen your jars a dollar a jar. Yeah, but, but say a dollar a jar. I don't need all of my jars open at one time, and I'm not having to come no, no, out. No, 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 not open. We, we open them, and then we no. turn them back just gently enough so they're closed, but that you can get them open again. I need all my jars opened at once? We, we don't leave it open. That's ridiculous. I mean, obviously, we loosen the jar. I know, but then it's going to go bad. Do you know the difference between open. loose and open? Do you know the difference? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, I do. Thank uh, you right, very well, much. I just think it's ridiculous that really? I have to pay somebody a dollar to come open my jars. You don't need our services, right? No, I don't need your really? service. No, you don't need to come by and bring Okay, fine. Things. Tell you what we'll do. We're going to come by, we'll do a prank call on you, and then we'll just leave it at that. A prank call? Yeah. What do you mean a prank call? I thought you were opening jars. It's a prank call. <laughs> it's prospect your prank call uh, on Rock 107. We're doing oh it right now. This is not I, real. I was like, are you kidding me? You want to come to my house and open up all of my jars? No, loosen jars them. Of- oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're laughing now because you were sounding pretty upset there for a second. I was like, yeah. uh-oh, uh-oh. I was like uh, getting pretty hot because like who's going to call me and tell me that they need to come to my house and open my jars <laughs> and tell me what to do in my home? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Life's pretty tough right now. There's plenty of bad news, but it's not all bad. It's time for the brighter side of Prospector on Rock 107. A 17-year-old girl from Iowa was on a school trip to Texas with her choir when she lost her most prized possession, 
a ring her grandmother gave her with some of her dad's ashes in it. He passed away when she was seven. She took it off the beach because she was worried it would fall off in the water. Then it got thrown out with some trash, but she got it back after three city workers spent hours sifting through four tons of garbage to find it. Thanks. We needed that. The brighter side of Prospector on Rock 107. What's a yam bag? A fool, an idiot, a blockhead, a dunce, or an ignoramus. You know, a dullard, simpleton, or a clot, nitwit, dipstick, pea brain, mouth breather, or cretin. It's now time to announce the winner of Prospector's Yam Bag of the Day, as decided by you at rock107.com. Here are the nominees. Nominee number one. Props to this guy for wanting to help his daughter out. Maybe he should have waited until the next morning when he'd sobered up. A 51-year-old dad in Queensland, Australia, got a DUI last Sunday while driving his riding mower through the town at 1 o'clock in the morning. When a cop pulled him over and asked what he was doing, he said, quote, I just thought I'd drive this old girl over to mow my daughter's lawn. The cop said 1 a.m. probably wasn't the best time for that. A breathalyzer clocked the guy at 0.19, that's more than twice the legal limit here, and almost four times the legal limit in Australia, where it's 0.05. He's due in court in September, facing a drunk driving charge. Nominee number two. A man in Phoenix was arrested on Friday after he got stuck in someone's chimney while apparently trying to break into their home. This may have seemed like a clever move. I mean, it's been over 110 for an entire month in Arizona, so no one's using the fireplace. But that's where the cleverness ends. The homeowner heard the guy in the chimney and called 911. Firefighters rescued him, and he was taken to a hospital to get checked out. He's fine, but now he's facing charges, including criminal trespassing. The guy is a 47-year-old named Irvin Guzman. The family says the guy knew them, but it's unclear what their relationship was. Also, no word on why the guy was trying to break in, whether it was an attempted robbery or something else. Police are still investigating. And the winner is... The drunk dad who got a DUI on a riding mower at 1 in the morning. You, sir, are the yam bag of the day. And we'll move on to Friday's yam bag of the week competition. Keep it here for all the nominees for Prospector's yam bag of the day. Weekday mornings on Rock 107. Thanks for listening to Prospector's Prime Cuts podcast. Be sure to catch us live weekdays from 5.30 to 10 a.m. on Rock 107 or online at rock107.com or the Rock 107 app. A free download for your Android or iPhone. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss Prospector's Prime Cuts.